Did you get told you need an engineered foundation for your project and you don't know what it is? Stick around and let me explain. Welcome back, Pat. Adbeal here, and today we're gonna be diving into engineer foundation and its process. This is so you can start on a solid ground, okay? So we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that, and then after that, we're going to an actual live site where we did an engineer foundation. That way this video can provide you everything you need to know about engineer foundations. Now, let's get this one going. All right, Wolfpack, let's talk about permits and engineered foundations, okay? Texas is still the wild, wild west, or the wild west, when it comes down to permits. You might need them, you might not, okay? And so that is all determined by your city, your county, and you. Some folks do choose to not go through the permit process. Not that we recommend it, but here's the deals. Permits will determine if you need an engineer foundation, and not just that. Here at Wolf Seal Buildings, if you're building a commercial space, a barn dominium, a residential, or a public structure like a church, we require an engineer foundation with the soil test. No exceptions. Now, when you call us and you ask for a quote and you need an engineered foundation plan, this is the process with Wolf Seal Buildings, okay? So, we will give you a preliminary price, okay? This price is just a preliminary, but it's not the final price. And the reason is, is because there's still a lot of uncertainties. You know, your soil conditions, your specific engineer requirements, your building codes, type of category of your structure, and permitting requirements sometimes. So, for that reason, we only give you a preliminary price to give you an idea. We don't like hidden costs, nobody does. However, again, not until we get the engineers, the testing involved and, and visiting your site, that's when we will actually know what the final costs are. So let's not call them hidden costs, let's call them pending costs. Alrighty, Pac. Now, you as a consumer might be asking, well, how do I know if I wanna even proceed with uh, getting the engineer foundation if I don't even know what the cost will end? What if it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars? Yeah, that's scary, right? So this is what we do, okay? So whenever you get that quote, and then you know we proceed with still doing a site visit, we go and check out your site, and when we do that, we also create a preliminary foundation plan internally based on data, based on uh, previous engineer plans that we've done in your area. And so we know how our engineers usually come back with. And so therefore, we are able to give you a really close price that resembles uh, what it can come back at, okay? And so that's to help you as a consumer and be like, okay, um, yeah, let's proceed forward. Let, let's get this engineering process going because I kind of already have an idea. And uh, usually we're around 90% uh, to 95% accurate. Now, the biggest curveball that we can get in an engineer foundation is peers. Why peers? Let's break it down. All right, so if you're building in Texas, you probably have heard engineers say peers, okay? And there's a reason for that. A lot of Texas soil, especially in certain areas, there's, it's heavy in clay, okay? And clay is expansive. So what do we mean by that? It moves a lot. It expands when it's wet, it shrinks when it's dry, and over time, that movement can really wreck your foundation. That's where piers come in, okay? They're drilled deep into the ground, past the unstable clay, and uh, sometimes we hit bedrock, sometimes not, but just deep enough to uh, provide a solid, strong support. However, not every area in Texas uh, requires uh, piers, okay? Now, this is where we're talking like San Antonio, Austin, where you got rock, and so, for those, re for those areas, that's why we don't know until we actually do the soil test, and that's when we know exactly what your foundation needs. Also, there are different types of piers, okay? We got some drilled concrete piers, steel piers, or helical piers. 
This will all be determined by the engineer doing the engineer foundation plan. Okay. Alrighty, Pac. I hope that this information gave you more insight on how uh, engineer foundation plans and engineer foundation uh, construction works. Okay. I just want to recap a little bit of our standards and how we do things. This is just how we do things. If you're doing a residential home, if you're doing a commercial space or even like a public structure like a church, we will require engineer foundation plans and that's just our, our standard. We truly believe you can't have a sturdy building if you don't have a sturdy ground and foundation as well. <laughs> it goes hand in hand. Now, we can't speak for other companies, but those are just our standards. Alrighty, Pac, as promised, we're gonna show a clip of a video we actually did a while back, okay? That was uh, on-site where we did an engineer foundation. This is gonna allow you to actually see it more and how it actually happens in the construction, okay? I thought it was a great video and we wanted to show that. Now, before we go there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We got a lot of cool projects coming. And also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. We're actually sharing a lot of uh, stuff that we can't really share on YouTube. So you don't want to miss out, all right? So let's get this one going. By the way, here's our yard signs. If you see that on the streets, we're definitely building in, in the near future, near your neighborhood so we're in the mount close to mount vernon um, it's a really nice community next to a lake front so it's really nice home i actually want to give you guys a recommendation so if you if you're building a home if you're building it like a church or even something like commercial sometimes your city or your county will not require engineered plants engineer plans but we recommend it we recommend it specifically. What we do recommend is a foundation plan. A foundation plan, an engineer foundation plan, is gonna be built for, you know, uh, based on your soil report that is done on your property. Okay, so when you do have a soil report, then the foundation plans can be created to, you know, to make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's a solid foundation. And why do I recommend specifically a foundation plan it's because a lot of times that's what is actually not, you know, taken very serious. This is the most important in my opinion, because it's, it's uh, first of all, once you pour, that's what it is. Can't really do much about it. On a building, you can always reinforce a building, but on a slab, once you're poured, it's poured. If it's not solid, if it won't, you know, if it's not strong enough to support the building and everything you're doing on it, you know, the foundation, and really, uh, it's gonna affect the rest. And it's also what you don't see. So it's really kind of ignored a lot from what I've seen, and I don't recommend that. I recommend to pay a lot of attention to your foundation. This piece of paper from professionals, I highly recommend. And this is an engineered foundation, so it also is easier on us because we follow specifically what an engineer someone that has study or, or you could say the expertise of what he's doing with calculations. And then we do, you know, what they're asking and that allows the, uh, uh, make sure that you have a solid foundation for your project. So this is um, something we recommend. You don't have an engineer foundation if you don't have, have it inspected. That's the way it's. Uh, it's been said and it's true, you know, because I can build according to the plans, but say I want to cut some corners, nobody inspects it. It's definitely not engineered. So once we have all the forms, all the rebar, everything, before we pour the engineer for this foundation plan, it's going to come in and inspect it. And it's going to tell me, hey, it's perfect. Or, hey, you need to fix this, you need to fix that, or you need to fix this. So that's a great way to protect you as well as a, as a customer, as a client. Uh, but it's also a great way for us because it allows us to make sure that, you know, we have, um, you know, we have a solid foundation and that you're going to be really happy. So if you're building a home, if you're building like a church or building uh, like a commercial, highly recommend to have at least an engineered foundation plan, at least. Let me talk a little bit more of the, what we're doing for this project. 
and I hope you learned a little bit on engineered foundations. For example, this project. This project is not your typical monolithic slab that if you ask for a quote for say category one, which what we mean by category one is kind of like a storage building um, where people is not really living in it. You could be just recommended a monolithic slab, which is just a like a down um, with the with the footer and then a, a slab. OK, this one is actually two phases. We got to do a 15 foot plus fill deep pier below the ground. So either we do it 15 plus fill or unless we hit competent limestone. So this is gonna be under the footing to support the whole slab. That's why there's gonna be 25. We're actually adding one extra uh, just because we feel like it would be really good to add it right where one of our main frames is landing. We'll just throw it in there um, just because, again, we want to make sure that our clients are happy and this is a project that will last generations. This is how an engineer foundation can require a little bit more than just getting a quote from just any builder on your project. This one is a lot more reinforced, has a little bit more extra extra things and it's great so we came in yesterday we had the uh forms well not the full forms but we've already uh, basically squared out typically where you see the nails they run a string this way and a string this way and wherever they meet that's where where the corner really starts but right now the important thing is where you see here the little orange marks that's where we're gonna have footers or the piers going down we're gonna have 25 25 piers going 15 foot deep I do have a rant I don't like to talk bad about a company and it's fine but we've been uh, today's Tuesday it's already uh, like 3 p.m. and we've been waiting for the uh, equipment rental we had for to drill the the, the piers so it hasn't arrived, it didn't arrive, they made up a lot of excuses. It's fine, we, we just canceled it. The problem now we have is that it's supposed to rain in the next few days. Um, the equipment we need is, you know, you don't really easily find it, I guess. So now we have to wait. But it is what it is. Those are things to keep in mind when you're building a big project. It's a long, it's, it's a process. There are things out of our control, like that, and then weather. So. It is what it is. Uh, we, we take ownership, we take accountability, and we just gotta find a way, so. But just giving you guys a little heads up so you guys know whether you build with us or you build with someone else, those are the challenges that builders go through to, uh, or contractors as well, go through to be able to you know make a project happen. Now, for this, check this out. Right here, needed a lot of site prep, okay? A concrete slab is a concrete slab, and that can be quoted from anywhere because it's just concrete, rebar, and the work to build it. The only thing that can't be estimated without looking at your property is site prep. So here you can see, it's already, that pad is level, and here all this dirt select fill was brought in. Over 100 yards, and it had to be very, very well compacted or else, you know, that's just, just gotta compact it very well. And so keep in mind the location where you want your building, there could be a lot of site prep work. And that site prep work involves bringing in a lot of dirt, you know, spreading it out the right way and then compacting it nice and solid. So that way you don't have any, uh, any of that dirt later on, you know, collapsing in between when your slab is already poured and your slab is not going to be solid okay so keep that in mind we're just waiting on the piers guys i hope you learned a little bit on site prep i hope you learned a little bit on engineered foundations and uh if you guys have any questions again don't forget to subscribe see you guys next one i'm glad to be actually shedding some light on this process mm -hmm. and i'm super excited mm -hmm.